Um, well, you, you mentioned there the success. I mean, did you talk about being up there and the only way is to come down, but you've had more hits than any other rock band in the UK. I think it's over 60. I mean, 22 yeah. top 10 singles, 25 yeah. top 10 albums. I mean, that's incredible. You mentioned yeah. America there, but despite the success here in the UK, you never cracked America. Is that something that you, you, you regret or now, do you look now, back on yes. that? Now, yes, but at the time... I probably had a modicum or sense than the others that there was, it was getting to a point where we'd made all this money and were making all this money and generating income and going to America and spending it and chasing the Yankee dollar. I remember that, chasing the Yankee dollar. Lots of acts, to their credit, hung on to it to fight and get America. If we'd have lasted, to, tried to stay a, bit, a couple more tours, there, we would be in a position now where the worst way we'd be able to do Two and a half, three years' work of playing to roughly three to five thousand people a night and never repeating the venue. Mm -hmm. Whereas we, we're stuck this side. I don't mean it as a negative, it's something. Whether Rick and I would have killed ourselves or all of us have killed ourselves with drugs and indulged, it's possibly. But at the time, it seemed like a sensible move. I could imagine whether it's our parents or older generations saying you had all that success and you went to America and chased it and lost all that fucking money. I grew up in retail, kind of, so it was try and act sensible, guys. And um, I remember sitting in California and looking at the map where we were and thinking, the chances of breaking this country the same as we did any other country, you just kept working the territories and you just kept going back and you just kept going back every three to four months until you built it and inevitably you kind of did. And that's the way a lot of other bands worked America. But we didn't, and so... It's funny, on the on the tunes and chat tour thing I do, there's a Q&A and people say, would you do it all again? And you go, well, no, I'd rather not have left Burner this mother, I'd rather not have done cocaine, I'd rather not have done drink, drink the cocaine, I'd rather not have done this, I'd rather not have done I wish I'd left Sleepless Crow in the earlier period when I first wanted to leave and do stuff, but, but I wouldn't be where I am today. And I, I, it's, it's easy, all of us say, oh, yeah, I wouldn't do that. But are you sure? By not doing that, which seems good not to do cocaine or whatever, where you'd have been, you're sure that where you'd have got to in this place would be better. And, and, and we tend to assume that it would. And I no longer assume that it would doing the Tuesday chat tour that I, I cannot believe how much I enjoy it. Yeah. And I keep thinking, I'd love to have done it before, but it, it couldn't be before. It's now. I. I'm very, very enthused about it now. It's just that I'm nearly 51 now. 50, I'm getting older now. Just getting a bit older now. And shit. I'm nearly as old as my gardener. <laughs> <laughs> so when we talk about the success, I mean, obviously, you are a British institution, but it's not just Britain. I mean, Europe, Australia had platinum, multi-platinum albums over in Australia as well. So the success was yeah. just but, incredible. We still want more. We still yes. want more. It never stops. It's similar Human to nature. drugs and life. Don't Yes, human nature, actually. What do you want? More. Well, what would you like next? More. What do you want? To, I'd like to sell more tickets tomorrow night. Same on the thing I'm doing. As much as I'm really at the three to six hundred, lovely. But I think, oh, a thousand might be nice at night. Is it something in that, whether it's because I grew up in retail, watching my uncle selling ice cream and saying, I'm at the day, God, it's good. And it never, you never actually, and the same in this, I never actually, bring it down to counting the, the money as such. It's just that you're aware. It, it, it's so many fold. The, the, you know there's money coming in. You know you don't have to worry about paying the bills. You, do. you know you're popular. And that's probably the most thing is that one's ego. Look at me. I'm lovely. Aren't I? And you see so many people in showbiz that get lost. I, I'm, I was quite pally with um, Mark Bone. And um, we were doing stuff, and I, I, every now and again I see a famous shot of him on TV. And it's something I learned from him, which is odd. And I remember watching this, I was probably on the same show, in Top of the Pops, they used to have monitor screens in the, in the gantry up there. You'd see a TV monitor, various TVs, so you could be on the floor if you were working it. You could be over the other side of the studio and look to see what's on screen to see if you were safe to move. And if anybody sees it, you see Mark, he's going out and he goes, And you see so many people watch themselves on the monitor. And that's something I learned to don't, don't do that because what it gave off to me as a punter watching Mark on the TV was 
I didn't want to see him be that way. I wanted to go. I wanted to go be um, subject to his image, as it were. I wanted to be suckered in. And the moment I saw this, oh no, I don't want to see that. It's a bit human. Fuck me, I look lovely up there. <laughs> and you see so many people do that. Why did I get to that? You asked me something. I have no idea, actually. I have no idea. Uh, but just touching on top of the pops, I mean, it is that's that's a huge British institution that's it's left us now. And I speak to to various people that appeared on top of the pops maybe a couple of times. Are you guys with all your hits? You're on it more than pretty much anybody else. And um, what's what's your memories of that in, incredible institution? Well, it was getting to it first, and it was if you didn't get it, you see what I mean? Again, it was one of those yeah. things you were really knocked out, and then it became blase about it. And then, oh, we haven't got to be there that early, but it, it, it sold records. Lots of people, as with anything with that as massive success, it has equal amounts of naysayers. The thing with Top of the Pops, it was Top 40, so it was dictated to you by the Top 40. But when I was at home before Max Dickman, and subsequent to Mastic Man and, su- and Success, you'd watch Top of the Pops. You would see, for argument, say, what's the matter of you? And I quite liked it, actually. But I, I didn't mind novelty records because, if you like it, it helps you define. We're told not to be judgmental as human beings, which is kind of fucking stupid. How do we make our way without being... But you would say, oh, I don't like that. That's not me. That's not... And it would help people define who they were musically and so on. Whereas now we go to if you want if you like blues you just find a blues station that's it you listen to the same shit all day it it's like that puppy in there smoking a cigarette he just smokes a fucking cigarette all day poor sod he's being poisoned by something that and I'm not sure it doesn't poison us we have everything in our lives now on TV and I know they're on the buses at work when we go to when I go to work um you just sit there scrolling through for you know then the TV ones. Then the documentary run, you go, oh, fuck it. You get fed up looking. So the very fact when we're given everything we need, I don't want that anymore. So I think I do think that Top of the Pops or that ilk of show is kind of good for us as, as generally as a as a music business. We now are dictated to by Spotify, as most people realize. But it, it has stifled some of the creativity, the idea that a 40-second, a 30-second intro is going to come along. It's very unlikely because you don't get the 10-second register of the 100 of those becomes a download and so on. Yeah. Um, so I dictating to buy for the wrong reasons. As much as I'm bitter and twisted about the fact that it's ripping all of us off, another issue, and it's now getting to the film industry. It has to sooner or later. Um, it's, it's the creativity thing it, it's ruined, I think. Well, that's me being bitter and twisted. I said, I'm in my late fifties now. That's the second time I got away with that gag with you, and you haven't even flinched. You're thinking, is he fifty? <laughs> hey, I was, I was thinking it was late forties, just like me. Anyway. <laughs>